Two NASA space telescopes collaborated to closely examine a distant galaxy and made a staggering revelation. Inside a galaxy that is over 13 billion years old, they identified an enormous black hole. This supermassive black hole, acknowledged as the oldest one confirmed to date, possesses a mass roughly equivalent to the combined mass of all the stars in that galaxy. In the galaxy named UHZ-1, astronomers observed the distinctive signs of a growing black hole only 470 million years after the occurrence of the Big Bang. This discovery may contribute to unraveling a cosmic enigma concerning supermassive black holes, suggesting their presence in infant galaxies during the earliest phase of the universe shortly after the Big Bang. Black holes come in two varieties, stellar mass and supermassive. This is fairly self-explanatory. The stellar mass black holes might be roughly 10 to 100 times the mass of our Sun. A supermassive black hole, a term without an ounce of hype, can be many millions or even billions of times heftier. The residency of such monstrous black holes in the cores of virtually all galaxies, including our own, has fascinated astrophysicists, in part because their origin is unclear. The new report can't fully resolve the issue, but it makes a strong case that at least for UHZ-1, the supermassive black hole didn't grow gradually, but rather was supermassive from the get-go. The report leveraged data from both the Chandra X Ray Observatory and the James Webb Space Telescope. This is cosmic archaeology using ancient light in the X, ray and infrared portions of the spectrum. The light from UHZ-1 is a very large black hole. The UHZ-1 was emitted 13.2 billion years ago, about 400 million years after the Big Bang. The observations, according to the new paper, show that the supermassive black hole at its core has roughly the same mass as the entire galaxy, which is absolutely crazy. The supermassive black hole in UHZ is fascinating not just for its mass, but because it is the first instance of what scientists at Yale University call an outside black hole. They theorize that such a black hole could develop from a collapse of a huge cloud of gas, and now there is evidence for the hypothesis. This discovery is just the latest in what is sure to be a very long list of groundbreaking research concerning the early universe that Webb is delivering and will continue to do so. Now that the telescope has begun doing science operations with Hubble, Chandra and other observatories, we are sure to find many more fascinating things about our universe. The telescope is also collaborating with TESS, the transiting exoplanet survey satellite, the successor to Kepler, and it is catching up big time. New research announces eight more TESS candidates. Yes, you heard it right, and they're all super-Earths. TESS's planet hunting methods are more refined than Kepler, as it was specifically built to detect exoplanets transiting in front of bright stars in Earth's neighborhood. Using TESS's data, along with ground-based telescope data and high-resolution imaging, scientists found eight potential super-Earths. Not only that, they've also identified that six out of the eight planets are excellent candidates for habitability as they fall within the star's habitable zone. But a star's powerful radiation, especially in X-ray and UV emissions, can strip away a planet's atmosphere over time, regardless of it being in the habitable zone. This is where the concept of cosmic shoreline comes into being. The cosmic shoreline is a dividing line between planets that have retained their atmospheres and planets that have lost them due to XUV radiation from their stars. Now, out of the six of the eight super-Earths found, two of them fall on the better side of the cosmic shoreline. The findings are so promising that the two super-Earths TOI 771b and TOI 4559b have been chosen for further atmospheric study with the James Webb Space Telescope. The scientists, however, went ahead and simulated the atmospheres of the eight super-Earths to see what the James Webb Telescope is likely to find, 
when it examines their atmospheres. The results are intriguing, showing signs of carbon dioxide, water, and most intriguingly, methane. Methane can be a biosignature, though there's a lot of uncertainty. Finding it in any exoplanet atmosphere will help scientists understand its presence more fully, whether it's an actual biosignature or not. However, real observations of the validated planets using the Webb telescope are required to confirm the transmission spectra analysis. Keep your fingers crossed, because recently, an investigation conducted using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope on K218b, an exoplanet with a mass of 8.6 times that of Earth, has uncovered the presence of carbon-based molecules, including methane and carbon dioxide. This discovery made by Webb contributes to recent studies that suggest K218b might be classified as a Hyzean exoplanet, one potentially featuring a hydrogen-rich atmosphere and a surface covered by a water ocean. The initial insights into the atmospheric characteristics of this exoplanet within the habitable zone were initially gained through observations made with NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. These observations subsequently led to further research that has reshaped our comprehension of the K218b system. K218b orbits a cool dwarf star called K218 located in the habitable zone and situated 120 light years away from Earth in the LEO constellation. Exoplanets like K218b, falling between the sizes of Earth and Neptune, are unlike any planets found within our solar system. The suggestion that K218b could potentially be a Hyzian exoplanet is particularly intriguing, as some astronomers believe that such worlds hold promises as environments to search for signs of life on exoplanets. The presence of methane and carbon dioxide, along with the scarcity of ammonia, lends support to the hypothesis that K218b could potentially have a water ocean beneath a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. The initial observations by Webb also hinted at the possibility of detecting a molecule known as dimethyl sulfide. On Earth, DMS is only produced by living organisms, with the majority of it being emitted by phytoplankton in marine environments. However, the inference of DMS on K218b requires further confirmation. Upcoming observations with the Webb telescope should be able to confirm whether DMS is indeed present in significant quantities in the atmosphere of K218b. The research team now plans to conduct follow-up studies using the telescope's Myri spectrograph with the hope of validating their findings more conclusively and gaining fresh insights into the environmental conditions on K218b. Following this finding, NASA stated that their ultimate objective is the identification of life on a habitable exoplanet, a discovery that would revolutionize our understanding of our place in the universe. Dr. Michelle Fowler, a NASA scientist, recently revealed that the Space Agency has been hosting top-secret conferences to discuss how they should handle the situation if they do, in fact, find evidence of extraterrestrial being. During a gathering in New York City, Dr. Fowler disclosed that meetings have been held to address the potential discovery of aliens. She further emphasized her belief that it is only a matter of time until alien life is found, given the vastness of the universe. In light of this, NASA is taking proactive measures to ensure they are prepared for the momentous discovery of alien life. The classified conferences serve as a platform for scientists and researchers to discuss and develop protocols on how to communicate and interact with any potential alien civilizations. But I don't know if we are going to come in contact with aliens like they show in the movies, as in advanced extraterrestrials with futuristic technology. If we find life beyond Earth, it is possible that it will be microscopic. Now we wait patiently for more data to come from K218b and of course the Trappist star system and of course our immediate star system neighbor, Proxima Centauri. Exciting time for science and humanity. 
This, I believe, is the grand transition phase, and our science is taking massive leaps, and we are making great discoveries, and the greater ones are just waiting for us ahead in the highway of space-time as we march on, nestled on this beautiful blue planet that will forever be home, no matter where. What do you have to say? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Cosmos Prodigy.